Hi, I'm Mike Elliott, and you're watching the Stock Geek Podcast, where we help investors find potentially profitable small and mid-cap stocks that may be undervalued, on the verge of a breakout, or have other fundamental characteristics that make them an attractive long-term opportunity. Today, as part of our CEO Roadshow series, we're joined by Dr. Nader Porhassan, President and CEO of Cytodyne, a biotech company developing innovative treatments for multiple therapeutic indications based on lironlimab, a novel humanized monoclonal antibody targeting the CCR5 receptor. They trade under the ticker CYDY. Hi, Dr. Porhas, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So for investors new to the story, I'd like to start off by getting an overview of what Cytodyne does. What are your primary pipeline drugs right now, and what indications are you seeking FDA approval for? So we have a humanized monoclonal antibody called Liron Limap. In the literature in the past, it was referred to as Pro140. This product was developed originally by Progenix for HIV. We continued that with HIV, and we went for an unmet medical need population, which was a small trial. And we finished that trial, had our primary endpoint. But meanwhile, we are developing it for HIV for monotherapy, which is the most exciting thing the world of HIV has ever seen. And this product, when we enroll for it, the centers that enroll patients are overwhelmingly joining those centers to enroll in this uh, monotherapy. And we were in Dr. Oz uh, talking about it for some celebrities. And so having said that, two populations, uh, unmet medical need and monotherapy, which we hope can change HIV. And what is the timeline for approval and commercial release of uh, Lironlimab? So but after we hit our primary endpoint with an impressive p-value, we finished the trial with 81% suppression viral, uh, suppressed viral load. And that compared to Pfizer for the same population was 45% or so. And the last product that was approved, 43%. So 81% was very uh, impressive. We met with FDA. They gave us, they granted rolling review to us which allowed us to file the final application for final approval, BLA, biologic license application. And we submitted the first one third back in March. The next one third is clinical by August and the last one hopefully by September. Now, August and September timeline, and we have to be very careful because we still need a couple of clearance from FDA for those timelines to happen. And we hope to let the public know very soon. Uh, but bottom line is hopefully we will be having revenue next year. Okay, great. And what other indications are you working on for your monoclonal therapy right now? So we were very pleasantly surprised when Pfizer took their HIV product to graft versus host disease. We did a small study, $10,000 study, about $10,000. And we were pleasantly surprised when FDA gave us phase two for that unmet medical population uh, uh, from, uh, need. So then we uh, realized that we have indication in uh, colon cancer. And then Dr. Pastel, the world-renowned oncologist, joined us because he said that your product is the only product that has hardly any toxicity or side effect, and it's an HIV product that would help me realize what I discovered. And what he had discovered was all the metastases of the cancers mainly happen through HIV pathway, which is CCR5, which is the target of this product that we have our monoclonal antibody targets CCR5, which it stops the virus from getting into the cell. All the cure and prep prophylaxis are through that CCR5. So we hold the key for that uh, uh, prop, but that's the key that also apparently works in cancer. So we have a triple negative breast cancer phase two that's about to inject the first patient, hopefully this month or next month. We have the uh, graft versus host disease, which is an unmet medical need. 40% of the patients die with graft versus host disease. In our animal study of GBHT, we eliminated GBHT. The other time in the world that happened, and we published that paper in peer review. And now we are going to focus on eight more indication, including NASH. And what can you tell us about the recent addition of uh, Dr. Jonas Saka, senior science advisor, and what, what does he bring to the team? Well, Dr. Jonas Sasha has been studying uh, Pro 140, Liron Limab, in one of the largest uh, primate centers in the world for monkey studies uh, in the OHSU, Oregon Health Science University. He approached us after asking for Liron Limab, and he used that for the last nine months or so in the studies that he's conducting. His results were so positive that he convinced his colleagues in Thailand to do a 
PrEP prophylaxis study for Lirondimab uh, for with the center at Thai and Thai Red Cross just signed a memorandum of understanding with us to go forward with a PrEP study, prevention and prophylaxis. Uh, in regards to cure, he also has a very interesting study that he has done. And as HBO did a documentary a year ago and continuously we see these news about Timothy Brown and cure coming out, all of them are taking CCR5 the receptor on the cell is missing, therefore a cure is happening for Timothy Brown perhaps and the uh, second patient uh, that uh, got that, which is London patient. Now, uh, Jonas Sasha, Dr. Jonas Sasha, a professor, associate professor at OHSU said that in his studies, he believed the future of HIV is Liron Lima because of that CCR5 and he's very excited to publish his data, which he believes it brings uh, tremendous major media attention to our product, which we are missing so far. So just to summarize, you guys right now have a drug that's a drug pipeline that has the most effective treatment currently known for HIV, also targeting the CCR5 receptor, meaning that it's it's also uh, potentially effective for, for a host of other indications. Is that correct? I just want to make sure I sum it up. Uh, please don't get me wrong, but one thing is uh, the current drugs work beautifully. If the patients take the drug on time, but about 60% right now have to take multi-drugs at the exact time. So every day they're taking a drug multiple times during the day, whereas with your, and then in the case of your drug, it's easier to administer because it's just a once a week thing, correct? Once, one dose a week, two shots, one after another, it's a sub Q. it's like insulin shot that diabetes uh, administer to themselves every day. So when you have something that can be that uh, easily administered and have hardly any toxicity or side effect, then the patients, as they have shown, when we enroll for our trial, there is tremendous will for patients to enroll. That tells us that there's a huge market opportunity and our numbers are pointing at seven, eight billion dollars worth of market size. Uh, one of the Gilead analysts two years ago said if this little company, Saturday Night, has success with monotherapy, there will be pushback on the sales of Gilead. So. We will get noticed and our results right now show that the higher responders rate is there. We submitted our pivotal trial for monotherapy to FDA. Again, our first trial on med medical need population, we have finished that. We're ready to have hopefully revenue next year with that indication. And uh, then it, it cost comparison wise, how does your drug compare to what the current treatments are in the market? Are you guys, you come in way lower since it's just this once or twice a week regimen? We, are, we have so many benefits to the current drug. One of them, long-term toxicity, patients taking these pills for 20 years gonna have problems. We don't believe we have any of those. We have patients on monotherapy have gone for five years now with our product. So with all of those qualifications, we can match any price out there. So with less toxicity, less dosages, similar cost to what's out there, definitely not more. So it compares very favorably, very competitive. So, so that sounds good. Uh, Dr. Porhasan, that's all the questions we had for, for the show today. Uh, what, what else should investors take note of when, when looking at adding this stock to their portfolio? Absolutely. The, the investors, in my opinion, should focus on the fundamentals. When Gilead was gone unnoticed from 1992 to 1999, their stock was around the same level as our stock is right now. The, the biotech companies get the inflection. People have to pay attention before that inflection happened. Our inflection, in my opinion, is this year. We've proven our uh, primary endpoint, finishing the trial, getting the BLA submission uh, accepted by FDA to continue, and our monotherapy cancer. I mean, things are stacking up, and I think we are ready for that. Well, Dr. Porhasan, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to, to come on the show. We're going to continue to follow the story closely here, and we'd like to get you on uh, in a couple months for another update. Absolutely, and thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Take, Take care. care. You too. We have been talking to Dr. Nader uh, Porhasan. He's the president and CEO of Cytodyne. It's a biotech company developing innovative treatments for multiple therapeutic indications based on lorolimab, a novel humanized monoclonal antibody targeting the CCR5 receptor, and they trade under the ticker, ticker CYDY. To learn more about them, please visit www.cytodyne.com. Thanks for watching CEO Roadshow.